The gentle lady from Florida, Miss Comack, is now recognized for five minutes. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll jump right into it. So, uh, Miss Cole, am I saying that right? You are. All right. Wonderful. I always have to ask because people always get my name wrong. But Miss Cole, as you know, my dairy farmers in the great state of Florida were especially hard hit by the price inversions that occurred during the pandemic two years ago. Now, I appreciate that the department has reimbursed farmers for some of the losses under the Pandemic Market Volatility Assistance Program, but I'm continuing to work on rectifying that program's 5 million pound limitation. I know that we see eye to eye on how important it is that we work towards real reforms for the dairy sector that avoid a repeat of what happened amid the pandemic and that we consider the impact of such reforms and how that can and what they can do on dairy farmers of all sizes, including our family dairy farms in my state, where the average dairy has more than 1300 cows. And keep in mind, these are all family operations. These are not massive corporate entities, um, but they are family operations. So. Can you give me your assessment on some of these pricing dynamics and how they impacted producers in different areas? Thank you, Congresswoman. I've been on many of your uh, family-owned dairy farms in Florida, and I completely understand how they're operating and the unique uh, marketing conditions that they face in the state of Florida that are different than from other uh, areas across the country. And what we did see through the pandemic was that there was a real increase in, in price volatility. And typically we see cheese prices that are lower than what the price for fluid milk is, or class one milk as we refer to it. But during the pandemic, there were some market abnormalities that occurred and cheese was suddenly valued much higher than class one milk. And that continued for a period of time. And the, the department recognized that this was creating great hardship for the dairy sector and dairy producers. So the pandemic market volatility assistance program was developed and implemented. And I recognize that the <clears throat> program had different effects across the country and there were different payouts across the country. That was a result of several things, including the five million pound cap, which obviously impacted every producer in the state of Florida, and it may not have impacted um, all other producers in, in different regions. When we're looking at how the pandemic market volatility assistance program paid out, what it looked at was the difference between the prior class one mover and the current class one mover. It looked at the volumes of milk that were pooled. It looked at uh, how the cooperative or the processor was paying the individual dairy producers and took all of this collective information to determine how to pay out the monies. And I recognize that we were limited in the resources that we had available to us, and therefore we looked across to determine how other support programs were administered that um, USDA had been given authority to, and that's how the five million pound cap came into existence. So it is a program that we would you know, look at if uh, Congress were able to provide additional resources for that we could explore what, what other opportunities might be to help the, the dairy producers in your region as well as across the country. I appreciate your insight there. And um, I, I would like to uh, insert into the record an article from the Tampa Bay Times um, from one of my dairy farmers, Miss Brittany Nickerson Thoreau, um, Furlow. Um, Without I, objection. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, um, as you know, and you, you talked about this, my state, Florida. Our dairy farmers have been working for generations, but as we know, their livelihood and their survival are threatened. Now, I want to reiterate something that has already been spoken about in this hearing here today, which is that 95% of the U.S. dairies, even those larger dairies like those in my state of Florida with more than 1,300 cows, are family owned and operated. We keep reiterating this. Now, these farms are part of the fabric of my state. Uh, we like to call ourselves the dairy belt, and they are vital to our economy and our food security. And yes, these farms have grown in size, but they are still family farms. And they grow in size because they have to meet margins just to stay viable. One of the dairy farms in my state recently spelled out a reality that I hope we can all remember as we move forward. In the 1960s, a dairy with 27 cows was enough to support one family and three kids. To be successful today, 
Many of our dairy farmers, particularly those in my state of Florida, must operate on a larger scale with hundreds thousands even of cows in order to make a living and survive this challenging time. With any of the programs moving forward, I think that the, the volatility assistance program being one of them, we need to take into the reality this the, the account. Many of farms are not that small. They have many operations. And I look forward to working with my colleagues here on the committee, but also with USDA to ensure that our family-owned dairy farms are able to provide an equitable they're able to provide equitable relief and support regardless of the size of their operation. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.